Grindhouse was released in 2007, and it consists of two films, Death Proof, directed by Quentin Tarantino, and Planet Terror, directed by Robert Rodriguez. The film is meant to bring back the days of B-movies and exploitation films, and to go along with this, there are also fake trailers in between in various interstitial segments. For its original DVD release, Grindhouse was unfortunately put out as two separate films. They were also released separately outside of North America, partly because countries besides the United States don't necessarily have the Grindhouse double feature tradition. However, some saw it as a way to make more money, as people would then have to pay for two separate tickets. The films don't really have anything to do with each other. There are a few connections, but they never congeal into anything meaningful. Death Proof is about a sadistic stuntman who hunts down women in his specially made stunt car. In Planet Terror, there is an outbreak of a dangerous virus that turns people into zombie-like creatures. Grindhouse is a definitively postmodern film due to heavy use of intertextuality, mixing of genres, and the concept of simulacra. Tarantino and Rodriguez throw together aspects of all sorts of different genres. According to film critic Javier Martinez, quote, Robert Rodriguez's Planet Terror simultaneously occupies a number of generic spaces. A horror film about encroaching zombie hordes, a science fiction film about an experimental gas that unleashes a biological plague, an over-the-top black comedy, a splatterfest drive-in film, a fetish film, a tragic love story, a film about the creation of a Latino utopia." Unquote. Grindhouse is mainly a horror film, but there are decent amounts of drama, action, comedy, and sci-fi elements as well. Planet Terror includes zombies, a common staple of horror flicks, and there's plenty of disgusting gross-out violence in both parts. Thrilling action sequences are also a key part of Grindhouse, and there are many jokes as well, especially in the faux trailers. Planet Terror is at times intentionally bad, and this is played for laughs. The mixing of genres is a common technique in postmodernism, and Tarantino has been doing that his whole career, perhaps most clearly in Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill, and Inglorious Bastards. Unlike modernism and its emphasis on originality and breaking from the past, postmodern artists have no problem appropriating cultural elements from the past and reinterpreting them in a modern context. Similarly, the makers of Grindhouse aren't trying to hide that their film is directly influenced by past movies, and in fact you could say its intertextual references are actually one of the main selling points. Tarantino is famous for packing his films full of references and homages to earlier movies. These are just a very small percentage of them, but Reservoir Dogs has often been compared to the Hong Kong action film City on Fire, Pulp Fiction has clear homages to Eight and a Half and Band of Outsiders, and Jackie Brown begins with a scene that echoes the famous opening of The Graduate. This came to an apex with Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2, which reference literally dozens of movies from genres like westerns, martial arts, revenge, and horror, such as The Searchers, Citizen Kane, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Lady Snowblood, Five Fingers of Death, and Uma Thurman even wears Bruce Lee's famous tracksuit from The Game of Death. Grindhouse is no different, as there are nods to movies like the original Gone in 60 Seconds from 1974, the 1968 Steve McQueen classic Bullet, the 1971 film Vanishing Point, Lucio Fulci's Zombie 2, and many more including some of Tarantino's and Rodriguez's own films. Grindhouse also has simulated film scratches and dust throughout, making the film seem like an actual Grindhouse feature that has been damaged from being shown too many times. This adds another layer of fiction as there is somewhat of a constructed world that the individual movies are made in. Unlike films that are simply set in the past, Grindhouse has a fictional conceit that it was produced a long time ago. Modernism valued authenticity, but Tarantino and Rodriguez deliberately made something inauthentic. Grindhouse is pretending to be something it's not. Postmodernists often do things like this that make the viewer or reader aware of the medium itself. For example, when David Foster Wallace fills his novels with endless footnotes, it makes you acutely aware of the conventions of books themselves. These and many other elements serve to constantly remind the audience that they are watching a film. This is in strong contrast to most movies that try to keep the viewer engrossed in the story and feel like they're in a fictional world. Like when the title of Death Proof is made to look like it was poorly edited in after the fact, 
as if the filmmakers changed their mind and wanted a better title, as often actually happened in the real world with B-movies in the 70s and 80s. This mood is set from the very beginning when a title card saying our feature presentation is shown that looks like it's straight out of the 70s. Furthermore, when Cherry and El Rey hook up in Planet Terror, the film completely deteriorates and a title says missing reel. When things like that happen, it's hard to forget that one's watching a film. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.